Will You Snail is an evil and most challenging platformer where an AI is following you around, teasing you and generally making your life more difficult. The point of the game is the challenge itself. The game has a lot of very difficult levels that you have to work your way through, expect many deaths, expect some anger that might manifest into yelling at the screen or clenching the controller so hard you think about trying to break it although it costs a lot of money and you don't want to. You know those kind of games, right? And then on top of that, you have the AI. And let me be honest, they are the reason you're playing the game. Even if they're trying to amplify the frustration and angry feelings that you might be having about your inability to complete the level. The point is, the AI isn't just a gimmick. It's sort of a gimmick, but it adds a level of cohesiveness to the entire game that is missing from other games of this genre. Come on, it's a little weird in other games where you're in a metal room and then you're in a, like an outside world and the character is just moving through all these spaces just to have a space where the platforming can happen. It's not supposed to make sense. However, in Will You Snail, these electronic looking levels and the AI adds more personality and it makes a lot of sense what's going on in this game. Anyway, the AI is constantly through the whole game, following you around and bothering you. Here's a little example of what they might say to you. The goal of this game is for you to die. Just jump directly into the spikes, please. And definitely don't follow their instructions uh, like I just awesome. did. Okay, so the best way to visualize what the AI is doing in this game is to show you. This is the first level, I think. And you can see the spikes starting to appear at the bottom in the most likely places where you're going to be. Obviously, if a spike appears under a platform that you have to go to, it's going to be very difficult for you to get through there, but there's not that many. But here's the level cranked all the way up to the maximum difficulty. And there is a lot more spikes for you to try and manage your way through. There isn't going to be a quick way through this level. You're going to have to go back and forth and try and predict where the AI is going to predict where you're going to be. You have to out predict the predictor. It's probably the best way to say it. The game does a pretty good job at not making it impossible for the player, but it is quite challenging. I wonder if they're actually guessing the places the player are going to be or they have designated spots in each level where spikes are allowed to appear but might not always appear. That would make sense and the levels would be easier to craft. Look, it isn't just spikes in this game either. In this clip, we have conveyor belts that the AI controls from moving left or right. And also, the arrows coming down from the screen is the way you have to face when they reach you. So you're technically dancing in the game. It's ridiculous, but it makes for quite a challenge. There's later levels with lasers and racing. You have to beat something to the end of the level. It's all to say that there's a lot of variety in this game. Related to the AI, there are two final things to talk about. First, I have to salute the developer for adding this many dialogue options into the game. The AI never repeats itself and is constantly engaging you. It absolutely makes it feel as if they're really there. I know they're a character. I know these lines are written, but it's really well done in a world where I have low expectations for this kind of engagement in games. I don't know if it's an automated voice like Google or Siri, or if these are recorded lines, but either way, it's incredibly impressive. Second thing, if you don't like someone antagonizing you over how much you suck, and I just hit my 227th death, then this game is not for you. You will become even more frustrated than you need to be, and you're not going to do well on the levels. So it's, it's relentless and 
There's no turning it off or turning it down or anything like that. Oh, that, that would be a pretty funny option. A more supportive AI. You're doing a great job, even though you just keep dying over and over. Anyway, I, I just wanted to provide that warning in case it matters to you. Now, one thing the AI does do is an automated difficulty. You can turn this off in the options, but I do think it's kind of nice if you're playing casually. If you really are trying to complete all the levels at the maximum difficulty, no matter what, then it's not so great. But if you're like me and you're just trying to enjoy a difficult platformer and not really stress out on one level too much, then having the AI automatically turn down the difficulty for you is kind of enjoyable and then turn it back up again when you're doing a good job. So that way the game flows a little better instead of being always at 100% difficulty. I admit it's a little demoralizing when the AI tells you they've turned it down, but in the end, I do appreciate it since I can get past that level and continue experiencing the game. Moving on to the level select, you can see I'm running through it right now. There's a mix of some puzzle levels, some hidden rooms you have to find, although the game shows you if there's a second path through the room, but you have to still have to figure it out. And there's also other easier rooms to get through, just some visually pleasing stuff. Not all the levels are the ultimate challenge levels. Those have the chevrons above to indicate the difficulty level that it was completed at. Let's look at some of the level types. For example, there are optional puzzle rooms. These have you creating what looks like power lines, but you move from a power source through these towers and connecting them all up opens a door and you go to the next one. There's a, usually a few of these rooms in a row. Now I say that they're optional because at the start of them, you can immediately go under a shortcut to just skip all of these. You don't have to do them. I didn't really find them that challenging and they break up the game a little instead of trying to pull your hair out level after level. Another example is a secret room. It's not really that secret, but you do get to choose a hat to wear and I thought these were kind of cute and I wanted to include them in this video. So now you know that there are hats or a little rider on the guy. That's the one, maybe that's the one I should have used. I got kind of into the top hat. Yeah. Oh well. As part of the cohesiveness of Will You Snail, there is a story and it's scattered throughout many of the levels. You step on a button, it depresses all the way. Then you get some text boxes between Dolan and Unicorn that further explains what could possibly be happening in this world. There are some indications from the AI related to some of this stuff, but it's not tied together completely. Meh. The point of the game is not the story. It's here. I'm not opposed to it. It's slightly interesting. I want to find out more, but it's, it's not required. It's really, really is not the point of the game. I did want to end on a boss battle, just a little bit of this one, where it shows you how difficult the game is. Man, that was 396 deaths. That's a lot. The game is relentless, but I'm excited to say that there's something else in the game. There's this as well. Instead of just strictly platforming, they did mix it up a little with bosses. Variety is the spice of life. I, I think they say that. I'm going to admit to you that the AI had to turn down the difficulty for me to make it through this boss, but I still had a pretty good time doing it. Overall, Will You Snail is a great time. This is one of the best versions of a very, very difficult game I've ever played. The cohesiveness in all the levels, the AI's dialogue, it's thoroughly impressive what the developer has crafted here. I really appreciate the game doesn't waste my time. It gives me all the content right away. It's not being drawn out at all. And I'm able to get through on the difficulty that suits me as the AI shifts it in the background for me. But if you really are sadistic and want to hurt yourself, then you could just lock the difficulty in. So don't worry about that. I'm going to recommend Will You Snail to people who love very challenging gameplay, especially platformers, obviously. 
But I think even if you're not into this insanely difficult, frustrating gameplay, then this could still be a chance to dip your toes into the challenging waters and see if it sticks. And if it doesn't, well, you can just fall back to an easier difficulty and you'll still be able to complete the game. Totally worth it. Give it a shot. I recommend it. Dang, this is the end of the video. And hopefully this game has enticed you. If not, there's a large back catalog. Hit subscribe and maybe get a cookie.